Ship's Log, Celestial Date 218.253.23. Dagger and I have returned to the storm swept, accompanied by our new acquaintance, Harrow. We've managed to go through the um, vault that we found on this planet of Vale out here in the Burning Gyre, and we've returned with a strange object that's some sort of a crystal ball or a uh, transparent orb. I'm not sure what it can do, and I'm going to have to investigate it. Harrow has decided to join us because he's interested also in the results we get from researching this crystal ball. So he'll be with us for the time being, and now we're getting ready to head back into the drift. Hello and welcome. I am Scrabberlock, and this is Starforged Alpha Cluster. We are with Krista Sutton, our main character, who in the last episode went to the planet Vale and uh, explored Vale Vault, and we found a bunch of dead, forgotten ones that had been killed in an in a room that had weird magical artifacts like altars and pentagrams painted on the walls, and it had. A crystal ball and I've got some thoughts about this crystal ball um, we'll see what happens as we research it and learn more about it but in the meantime Chris has returned to her ship the storm swept and Harrow who is this new contact of hers he demanded that he go with her because he wanted to take the crystal ball it, itself and she said no no I want to keep it and he said well, I'll let you keep it but I've got to come along and participate in the research he wants to record and and have the findings because he, uh, if we look at his backstory here, or whatever you want to call it, he's got a disagreement with, I guess, friends of his that he's trying to refute that life naturally occurs on Vale. And this apparently isn't the case. Well, I'm not really sure. Somehow the Forgotten Ones found magic. Uh, it doesn't look like they made this magic thing. It looks like they found it on this planet. So maybe there was life before those guys came. But that's what he's trying to do. And so he's... Um, only agreed to let Krista keep it if he can participate in the research. So she's going to be doing some researching using her lore hunter uh, ability to conduct extended research or study of this object. Um, so in the last session, we basically went through the Veil uh, vault and uh, Krista had to go by herself in the exosuit because they found that there was some radiation in one of the rooms. So Dagger and Harrow had to stay back. And after getting into the final room, as I said, she found a room with like an altar and a pentagram and some other magical arcane symbols and this intact one, this in, one intact thing, which was this, this crystal ball, which is now in, in her tech lab on the ship getting ready to be researched. But before we do that, we've got to go into the drift and continue our journey, right? We were on this uh, formidable journey to Orcus, which is in the next sector over here, and we've got to get through this sector first. So I think we're going to do... Um, two more steps, like to here and then to here, let's say. Um, so let me put, just put Krista where I'm intending her to go. So this is going to be the next jump. And um, or do we want to make it, maybe we'll make it here. I feel like it's just too, it's too far for one jump and then too short for the next. It doesn't have to be equidistant, but I, I prefer it to be a little more equal. So we'll, we'll put it here. Um, and uh, we got to do our journey. So the first thing that happens is she says, okay, everybody strap yourselves in. We'll look at this orb later. And she straps herself into the pilot's chair and Dagger gets into the navigator's chair and um, Harrow straps himself into the co-pilot's chair behind Krista and next to Dagger. And Krista says, all right, let's punch it. And she heads into the drift with her Eidolon drive. And let's undertake an expedition. We have three momentum. So if we get bad rolls, we don't have any momentum to help us. And uh, we're staying vigilant. We're not in a rush. And we roll. And we get a strong hit. We envision the location and mark progress. So we get here. So, let me, uh, so let's figure out what we see. And then we'll start working on it. So we're, in, we're getting a sighting uh, in the Outlands. And we got to mark progress. So we get a sighting in the Outlands. And we see... Descriptor and focus. We see what? Hostile terrain. Okay, so this is going to be some sort of a space anomaly of some sort. So um, let me uh, pause while I do some drawing and stuff, and then I will bring you back. All right, now this, this isn't a peril. 
okay because we got a strong hit on this so i think this hex has in it um if it's a hostile terrain um let's say this is maybe some sort of a an asteroid field right it's a large um extra solar extra celestial like outside of a solar system um asteroid field right here in this hex so let me uh set that up all right so they're in an asteroid field um but again it was a strong hit so they've just reached an anchorage um so they pop out of the void and ahead of them is there's no star there's no there are no planets just this large field of asteroids some kind of debris field i guess if you want to call it that and um that's what they see when they uh, when they get out of the drift, and they're not they don't blunder into it again because this wasn't a miss. So they so Chris says, well, okay, um, let's just stay here. Let's kill the engines, and we'll let this thing we'll let our e drive spin down. And while we wait, let's go examine this orb. So they they get up from um, the bridge. They put the ship on autopilot and shut down the engine so that it st stays like sort of station keeping. They let the idle on drive spin down for a few hours and then get ready to spin it back up. And in the meantime, during the during this time, uh, they're going to go to Krista's tech lab. Uh, so if we look at the map here of the storm swept. Right, the tech lab is kind of over here. Right, so Chris is going to head over there. Okay, so she's in the tech lab and she's going to um, turn on her equipment, uh, bring out her scanners and stuff and um, her magnification equipment and the various other um, scanning materials that she has. And she's going to put the orb down and she's going to examine this thing. And so she's interested in learning more about it. So before she starts to examine it, I think she's going to um, she's going to secure advantage first right so she's going to prepare so she gets out um, her various items her equipment and uh, she turns the scanners on and she's going to um, she's gonna before she comes down here she's going to like as she's heading back we go back to this hallway. Remember, this is the hallway where Pyro has written all of his stuff, right? And so what she's going to do is look through his writings to see if he described anything about crystal balls in uh, conjunction with, like, the Forgotten Ones. And so this is using wits, right? And um, we're calling esoteric knowledge. So this is plus one because of our asset, so here we go, and we get, oh bad, 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 pay the price complication. Um, so assumptions betray her. So let me think about what that's going to mean in terms of securing an advantage. I think what this means is, well, let's, let's roll the story complication. I, I have an idea, but let's roll the story complication. Zero eight debt or promise comes due. Um, so let's think about this. So she agreed to let Harrow examine this thing. Why would he? What it almost seems like he's going to stop her or interfere with her looking stuff up about this. Um, did he steal it from her? Did Harrow steal it from her? But even if he stole it from her, why would that interfere with the secure advantage? That would interfere with the next step, right? So let me think about this. Okay, so I think I've got it. While she's up here reading, he stole it. I think that makes the most sense. Um, let's let's ask if that's what... Now, I'm not going to ask if that's what happens. I think that's what happened. 
what she doesn't see. So cut away from Krista. And we do a cut, a jump cut or whatever. And you see um, Harrow saying to um, to Dagger, he's going to go check everything in the engine room and make sure the drift uh, engines are spinning up okay. And so he goes down to the engine room and then he sneaks back and he steals the orb. So Krista doesn't get any, new, there's no information here. She spends a lot of time looking for it, doesn't see anything. And then when she gets in here, she opens her locker and the orb is gone. And she curses and she says, where the heck did the orb go? And so then, uh, and Dagger is in there behind her and she's like, what do you mean, where did it go? And Krista says, I left it right here on this shelf in this locker. And, um... Oh, there's four other lockers, three other lockers here. So Dagger says, well, she starts opening the other ones. Are you sure it's not in one of the others? And they're they're locked. And Chris is like, no, those are locked. I unlocked this one to put the orb in. And Dagger says, well, didn't you lock it again? And Chris is like, why would I lock it again? We were all on the bridge. And Dagger says, well, you know, I don't know. I don't know where it is. And Chris says, uh, and, and at this point, Harrow walks in and she says, did you take the orb? And Harrow says, what are you talking about? Because he just put it on his ship. And he says, what are you talking about? And she says, I had the orb right here. Did you take it? And Harold says, why would I take it? I told you you could have it. And Krista says, well, then where did it go? And Harold says, well, maybe you put it somewhere else. And Krista says, no, I didn't put it anywhere else. I put it right here. Did you take it or not? Um, so what kind of a move is she making here to talk to him? Is she gonna? Is she going to figure out? I think this is gathering information she says are you sure you didn't take it and he says why are you accusing me oh no you know what i think this is testing our connection maybe right testing our relationship conflict or betrayal role plus heart right um so he she says well who else would have taken it and he points to Dagger and says, maybe she took it. Maybe you took it. Maybe you hid it so that I can't get the information out of it. And so they start getting into an argument. Is this going to screw up their relationship? They don't have a, they don't have a very much of one yet, right? Let's test our relationship. We haven't done this yet and see what happens. We're rolling heart. No plus because we don't have a bond. We get a weak hit. We develop our relationship, but we also envision a demand or a complication as a fallout of this test. Oops, no, that is the wrong thing. There's no way to undo it, is there? That's very frustrating. So now what I have to do, one, two, three, four, we were at five, right? So now what I have to do is delete the whole thing and redo it. That's super annoying. Because I misclicked, I meant to click the develop relationship in here. Um, Let's reveal an aspect of him, right? What are we going to find out? We find out that he is deceitful. Well, that is perfect. He's deceitful. This is not going to be a good friend, I don't think. Um, so he's going to grumble about the fact that she didn't trust him. And he's going to say, well, if you don't trust me, why should I trust you? And how do I know you didn't just hide it somewhere so that you could go and sell it and I don't get to learn what I wanted to learn about it? And um, Chris says, well, maybe we should go up and check your ship. And Harrow says, maybe I should just, maybe I should just leave. And um, Chris says, well, your whole purpose, your whole purpose here um, was to study an orb that now doesn't seem to exist. And Harrow says, oh, so you're going to kick me off the ship? And Krista says, well, well, what else? Why else do you want to be here? Do you really want to come with us to Orcus? And Harrow says, no, I don't think so. I think you're right. I think it is time for me to go. Because he's got the thing on his ship, so he wants to get out. So he heads up to the docking area here where his ship is parked right here. And Krista and Dagger follow him up. And Dagger is not too happy about this either. And um, so they come up. They come up this way here, right, and um, climb up the ladder. And he and Krista says, "Well, okay, um, I guess I'll be seeing you around." And Harrow says, "Yeah, don't count on it." And he gets into his ship, still technically a connection, but there's some fallout. 
he's annoyed, right? So um, he's deceitful. And also, we want to make the note here that um, at their last interaction, um, Harrow and Krista uh, argued over the orb that he stole, but she isn't sure, right? So their relationship has grown a little, has grown more than a little, has grown, uh, what should we say, um, troubled, right? They're, they're not, they're not on great terms right now. They're, they're a little annoyed with each other. And he takes off and he's got the orb. So I guess we're not going to do what I was thinking of doing with the orb. Oh, well, back to the burning gyre after he takes off. Dagger says, well, I guess we better continue on our way to Orcus. And Chris says, yeah, we may as well. And they get back to the bridge. She goes to the engine room. She checks the Eidolon drive. It's working. It's ready to go. So they get back to the bridge. And they go back into the drift. And they head to this section. And so now we're going to undertake an expedition. And again... Whoops, no, we don't get any plus. I'm used to doing that with the robot. We, we're just rolling wits. And we continue. And we get a strong hit. So we get another good journey. So let's see, what do we find? In space, we get a stellar object. All right, so we go to the burning gyre. We gain another location. This time it is a stellar object that is a neutron star surrounded by intense magnetic fields. And this star is called... I'm going to start running out of combos here. Kappa Let's call it Gyre Kappa. And this is a neutron star, so let me set it up and I will bring you guys back. All right, so this is another star. It's a neutron star, but it still could potentially be on Krista's star chart. So they come out and they see this neutron star that is, as it says here, sort of surrounded by intense magnetic fields and there are some gases around it. And um, again, this was a strong hit, so there's no danger here necessarily. Um, but Chris is going to check to see if this is, and we're in this next box now, to see if this is one of the stars on our star chart. So again, we're just going to um, ask the Oracle. And again, for this box, it's small chance. Nope, it's not on her star chart. So Chris says... Um, Let's examine this neutron star and see if there's anything interesting around here. And Dagger says, Jackpot, we're right on the border of the next sector. Why don't you just want to keep going? Don't you want to get to Orcus? And Krista says, well, yeah, but aren't you curious? Aren't you curious? There could be something interesting here. Let's explore it. So we're going to explore a waypoint. So we can explore a waypoint. We get plus one momentum on a hit. Right, because of our explorer path. Um, we don't have anything else with us here. So we'll just kind of close that. Um, so let's explore the waypoint. And we're rolling wits. And she doesn't have any bonuses to do it, but she'll get extra momentum if she gets a hit. Let's explore. Oh boy. We get a weak hit. We uncover something interesting, but it is bound up in a peril or reveals an ominous aspect. Envision what you counter take plus one momentum. So it's plus two because of the asset. Um, and so we find something interesting, but we also find something ominous. So let me think about that. All right, so let's let's roll action and theme to see what's interesting. If that gets me an idea. Charge disaster. Um, okay, so there, there was some sort of a disaster here, I think. 
So here's what I think it is. I, you know, I mean, I feel like this makes sense. It's some kind of a derelict that is trapped in the gravity well of the neutron star. So exploring it would be extremely risky because it would trap us in the gravity well of the neutron star. So what kind of a derelict is it? Right, it's in it's in deep space. Um, so let's see, it, what condition is it in? So let's create a derelict. Right, so this is a derelict. And it is in deep space. And um, type. What happened here? Type. Why is it not rolling? Condition. Oh, we've already done the type. Duh. Cold and dark makes sense. Outer first look signs that others are here. Okay. So. This is a. I, this is something that has been caught in. This is something that has been caught in a, um, in the gravity well. It's a ship, maybe? Let me think about this. All right, so one question is, is this a settlement or is it a spaceship? Um, so, yeah, let's delete this. So it's a settlement. So this is a, so this is some sort of a, it is a, it's some sort of an, um, a space station trapped in the gravity well of, what's the name of this thing? Gyre Kappa. So it's an ancient space station. I think it's not human. And it's trapped in the gravity well of Gyre Kappa. And I'm going to put that to approach or land on it requires uh, withstanding the the neutron star's gravity well right because the neutron star is is not a black hole but it's kind of close it's got a lot of gravity and and um, also the magnetic field right so and there are signs that our others are here. So let's ask the question. Um, I suspect, all right, there's, there's got to be like another spaceship moored to it, right? The question is, is this from a faction we already know? We know three factions right now, right? The Risen Watchers, the Shattered Federation, and the Universal Star. These guys are bad news. The Risen Watchers think we're a member, and the Universal Star is like us. Is it from a faction that already exists? We're in a totally other sector. So I think there's only a small chance. <clears throat> well, it, it probably can't be the Universal Stars or the Risen Watchers because they're small. It might be the Shattered Federation because they have inescapable... So let's say it's 50-50 that it's the Shattered Federation. Otherwise, it's going to be somebody else. It is not. So there is some other group, right? So there is a, a strange spaceship uh, anchored nearby. All right. Now, Krista is curious. But she has very high wits and she's not stupid. And the problem is that she could get caught in the gravity well of this um, neutron star if she goes to examine this derelict. Um, so let me come up with a name for the derelict. And it's going to be called Aurora. Oh, I like it. All right, so this is a derelict called Aurora. 
and it is in deep space and uh, let's change the these details here and we're going to pop Aurora so actually let's get rid of this gyre kappa and put Aurora here because that's the relevant detail um, and so so Chris is going to have to figure out a way to get to anchor the storm swept without getting caught in the gravity well and, the, and getting screwed up by the magnetic field. So I think she's going to secure an advantage and see if she can figure out, um, based on her knowledge, uh, do some scans. Can she find a way to get through the magnetic field and actually anchor in this derelict to see um, if she can explore it and find out who's here? Because again, she's curious. So let, if she can't figure that out, she's just going to move on. So let's secure an advantage and see if she can figure it out. We're using wits. Don't have anything extra to do with it. No extra bonuses. Get a strong hit. She figures it out. So and she has plus one on her next move. So she says, "I think we can. I think we can get through here." Um, so she shows Dagger the scanner and she says, "Look at the gravity waves. There's actually um, the the way the ma the magnetic waves that are coming out from this. They're, they're coming out in a pattern, and I think we can." navigate between them and then moor the ship and if we stay on the outward side of the derelict it's so big that it'll protect the storm swept from the magnetic waves we should be able to get in with no problem if we spiral in the right way and she shows her the path and dagger's like chris i think this is a bad idea and chris says do you want to learn how to explore or not and dagger says i already know how to explore i what i don't what i lack is your recklessness chris says i'm not reckless i think this is a perfectly we can, we can be perfectly safe doing this. Come on, let's go. And she's going to lead the way in. We're going to face danger. Um, but here we're doing mobility, right? Because she's trying to maneuver the way she planned to maneuver. Now, we get a plus one to this because of the previous move. And we do have some momentum, so we might be okay. We're rolling edge. And we get, oh boy, no, a complication. She fails miserably. And uh, we get a complication, so it's really bad. So I think, um, so let's see. I think two things are going to happen. One, she's the ship is going to get hit with the mech. She doesn't do it right. She doesn't navigate it right. It's too um, hair trigger. It's too fine a navigation for her. And the ship is bulkier than she realized. And they get hit with a magnetic wave. So the ship's going to have to withstand some damage. But I think also... Um, she's been, she has alerted whoever's on the derelict examining it to her presence. And, um, because this is a complication, I think it's a hostile group. And in fact, I actually think this is the Shattered Federation because it makes sense. All of a sudden, the ship that's moored there undocks spins around as she's getting as she's dealing with the, the alarms are going off and she's dealing with the um, magnetic stuff um, and the ship turns around and starts flying toward her and um, dagger says oh my gosh it's the shattered federation we better get out of here so the first thing we have to do is um, the ship is going to take some damage. Now, this is a complication. Uh, it's a miss. Uh, so, I think this is going to do two damage. And Chris is going to try to withstand damage. And see if we can... Um, and see if we can withstand this. So, she immediately turns the ship and tries to ride out the magnetic storm and... Uh, she turns the shields on, or she's going to try to turn the shields on, um, but first she's going to try to get to like help the ship avoid the worst of it, and we'll roll um, plus integrity. And we get a weak hit, 
And a weak hit, the vehicle is not, and if the vehicle is not battered, you may lose momentum in exchange for plus one integrity. All right, so we'll lose one momentum to gain plus one integrity, so the ship isn't too damaged. But sparks fly, um, a couple of the computer screens go blank, and um, there's an alert, and uh, Krista curses, and she says to Decker, go down to engineering and see what you can do. And Decker gets up out of the chair and goes back to try and see what she can do in engineering to try and um, fix the damage to... Um, to the systems that have been hit by the magnetics. Meanwhile, she's going to try to raise shields. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a battle here against the Shattered Federation. And I think it's going to be a... Um, it. I don't know... What, we'll see how big of a ship it is, but we're going to do a battle here. But the, the whole idea is she's going to try to get to a spot where she can get into the drift and just get the heck out of there. Um, so we're raising shields. So we roll. Plus our vehicle's integrity, right? And we get a weak hit. On a weak hit, we get three shields. So we do have shields. Shields are up, right? But um, the magnetic storm has damaged the shield generators a little bit, so they're not as strong when they first come up as they normally would be. And now we're going to enter the fray. And so we're forced into initiative. We're, actually, we're forced into combat. I'm going to say we're caught in a trap. Which is actually good for Krista because she's rolling wits. And we get a strong hit. Plus two momentum. That's always good. So Krista managed to turn the ship out of the way and gun the thrusters and pull away from these guys. But meanwhile, the Shattered Federation is radioing her, saying, stand to and prepare to be boarded. I think this is going to be a battle between roughly equal ships. And um, that the, the two ships are sort of roughly equal. So I think this is going to be a formidable fight. So let me set up the progress track and I'll bring you back. All right, so this is going to be a, ba a formidable battle against a Federation Corvette, I'm calling it. And if what Chris is going to be trying to do is get to the point where she can take decisive action and get out of here. Um, but she's in a fairly empty system. Um, I don't think there are any planets in here. So around the neutron star, maybe there are. Probably not. It probably destroyed them when it became a neutron star. So um, yeah, she's going to have a bit of trouble uh, trying to avoid this thing. But I think we're going to stop here, guys, because we're at 30 minutes, a little more. And this battle is probably going to take 45 minutes because it's formidable. So it's going to take a lot of moves. So we'll do that in the next episode. So here we are. I don't know. How many episodes has it been? Four or five on this journey. And we haven't even made it to the sector where Orcus is. But we've gone a long way. We found some pretty cool stuff. And it's been a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I have too. Until next time, I am Scrapperlock. And this has been Starforged Alpha Cluster.